produced in association with the NBC Television Network. and drive can reach the goal he sets for himself. And such a man is Chester A. Ryland, in whose breast burned the unquenchable fire of ambition. Though his body is relaxed, his ever active mind is reviewing past triumphs. Let us go back with him to the war days. Although it was Riley's dream to personally lead the Allied troops to victory, only one thing stood in his way. His brain and effort were required elsewhere. Always mechanically minded, and the war years over, the lure of speed drew him like a magnet. The roar of motors driving to the finish line, the yells of the crowd were a symphony to his ears. As he stepped victoriously from behind the wheel, Riley might have won this event year after year. Only one thing stood in his way. His brain and mechanical genius were required elsewhere. Never daunted, never discouraged, we find Riley today still burning with that ambition. Well, good morning. How's my little family? All up and kicking, I hope. Hey, Pop, today isn't Sunday. It's Thursday. Yes, I know what day it is, Junior. Well, then, why are you all dressed up? This is a pretty special day in my life, Babsy. Well, what's the special day all about? This is the day they pick a foreman to replace Hank Hawkins while he's away supervising the new plant in Santiago. You mean you're going to get the promotion with more pay? It ain't just a promotion, it's the confidence they've got in me that counts, Babsy. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Still eating breakfast, huh? My honeybee, you have a new coat. Oh, you noticed it. <laughs> yeah, you can stop doing the dying swan now. What's the Miata? Genuine unborn civet cat. That one in the middle was born. I seen it running around the alley last week. <laughs> Very excruciating, Riley. You change your tune when Jimsy gets his promotion. What promotion? The temporary foreman. I've made up Jimsy's mind to get it. Don't make me laugh. He ain't even on the ticket. Pop says he's gonna be foreman. Oh, now that is really amusing. Well, why shouldn't he be made foreman? Because Jimsy has the get up and go. And what do you think I've got? The sit down and spread. <laughs> well, I have to go. Bye. You see, Riley, I told you not to get all worked up about it. Oh. So you don't believe in me either. Go ahead, say it out loud. Say what? That I'm not fit for the job, that I'm lazy and shiftless with no ambition. You're nothing of the kind. Oh, yes, I am. You're not shiftless, Pop. You have plenty of ambition. That's right. Take sides with you, Mother. But I'll show all of you. I'll get that job, and you'll have fur coming out of your ears. <laughs> Ryan, you're nuts wearing your good suit to work. Why, when the superintendent makes me foreman, I want to look like Hank Hawkins. That's a pretty gruesome idea. In the first place, they don't want you. In the second place, you ain't got a chance in the first place. Oh, yeah? I've been sitting up nights till after 9 o'clock, exhausting myself reading this book. Six easy lessons to success. Who gets killed? It's not a mystery. It's the key to succeeding. Why, just yesterday, I threw a suggestion in the suggestion box on how to increase profits. I told him in just three simple little words. What are these three brilliant words to increase profit? Cut the expenses. Simple, huh? Right? Hey, Ryle. 
You gone deep? That was the lunch whistle. Yeah, so? Well, come on, as long as you forgot your lunch bucket, I'll split mine with you. No, no, thanks. I'm just going to finish up this corner, Gillis. Are you sick? Let me feel your pulse. No, no, I'm okay. Come over here. Then after that, I'm going to clean up this whole workbench. Oh, come on, I got to take you up to Doc Fisher. You're a mental case. There's nothing mental about me. I just got ambition. What's wrong with that? You ain't the right type, Ryle. An ambitious guy's got to use his head. He's got to have angles. You show me one man in this plant that's got more angles in his head than I got. <laughs> there, I'll ride along with you. Go ahead, scoff if you want to. But a foreman is like this riveting machine, Gillis. You see that little nut? That holds everything together. Well, I'm going to be that nut. <laughs> that figures. <laughs> There we are. Everything neat is a newborn pin. So what? It'll all get fouled up again. Not while I'm the foreman. Look, you got a minute and a half before that whistle blows. Ain't you gonna eat? Yeah, well, I'll just jump over to the commissary and grab a cup of coffee. Uh, don't touch nothing on that bench. I gotta mix more with other people. Hello, Gillis. I, I see you're quite a student. Me? Oh, that. <laughs> I was just glancing through it at lunch. Hmm. Here, let me clean the meat well okay. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's all right. Six easy lessons to success. Yep. Uh, you know, I like that in a man, Gillis. It shows a desire to succeed and step up. That's, uh, that's how I became superintendent. Well. Uh. Everything's nice and neat and clean. Everything in its place. You know, that saves time. And time is the essence of production. Well, somebody had to clean it so loud. Well, uh, it wasn't in the shape this morning. No, sir, that's what I'm trying to explain. You see, Ryle... Well, uh, where is this Riley that works with you? Well, Riley's over having a cup of coffee. Oh. And he left you to do all the dirty work, eh? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. You see, he forgot his lunch bucket and he had to hit the commissary. The forgetful type, eh? Well, that can be quite a menace. Oh, no, Ryle ain't no menace. He's a, you know, a sort of schmo. You know, Gillis, I like your attitude. Sticking up for a friend. It shows a, a very fine spirit. Oh, well, me and Ryle has been buddies since the old Brooklyn days. Hmm... You know, Gillis, I've come to a decision. You ain't gonna fire Riley. No. I'm going to leave him up to you. I'm going to make you foreman while Hawkins is away. Foreman? Me? Yeah. Yes. I want to see you put that book into practice. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Cox. You're making a mistake. I didn't... Well, there's the whistle, and Riley isn't back yet. Well, I want you to jack him up. Put him on his toes. Show him who's the head man around here. Be another Hawkins. Well, I made it. I ran all the way. I... Oh, hello, Mr. Cox. I didn't see you standing there. You're late, Riley. Huh? Thirty seconds to be exact. We can't have that around here anymore, so leave it not happen again. Now, just a doggone minute, Gillis. The super can ball me out, but where do you get off? I have just moved Gillis up to temporary foreman. Oh, well, that's different. If I'm going to be made the foreman, I... I... Gillis. Gillis! Did you say Gillis? I did. Foreman Gillis over me. Hard work and incentive pay off, Riley. That means you, Riley. So get off the dime. Action's what we want around here, so leave us have action. Because that's what we want around here, is plenty of action. Action! Well, yeah, it sure smells good, Mom. It should, at the price they charge for a roast. Do you suppose Dad got the job? Sure he got it. He was positive about it. Well, I hope so. I'm cooking him a special celebration dinner. Hi, Peg, I'm home. Hello, oh, darling. Hi, a foreman. Uh, what's for supper, Peg? Oh, never mind. What's for supper? What happened at the plant? Plenty. 
We got a new foreman. And guess who it is? Oh, Dad, you made it. I went two bits from Ingrid Gillis. Congratulations, dear. I'm very proud of you. No, no, no. Wait a minute, Peg. You ain't got it exactly right. You see, I did some extra work this morning, figuring that the super would notice it and make me foreman. Well, did he notice it? Yeah. Uh, only at the time, I was out getting a cup of coffee. And when I got back, he was standing there. And he gave it to you right on the spot. Yeah, he gave it to me, all right. Oh, and you deserve everything you got, so don't be so modest. Now, just a minute, Babs. I didn't exactly deserve it. All right, you didn't deserve it. You didn't work for it. But the main thing is you got it. Now, now just a minute, Peg. You see, I figured... Hello, everybody. Hello, honeybee. I can only stay a minute. Good. Riley, don't let your position make you rude. Once a sore head, always a sore head. Did he tell you the news? Oh, yes. Isn't it nice? Peg, start cooking supper, huh? Well, I guess congratulations ought to be coming. <laughs> yes, I guess they should. It isn't every woman that has such a clever husband. He's ambitious, too. And good looking. Well, leave us not go overboard. My Jimsy never won no glamour contest. Well, we're not talking about Gillis. We're talking about Riley. Well, what's he got to do with it? I'm talking about the new foreman, who happens to be my Jimsy. Your Jimsy? The foreman? I lose two bits. Well, you see, Peg, what happened was this. Oh, so he's been lying about it, huh? Riley is not a liar, honeybee. Oh, no? No. Well, now, just a minute, Peg. She's entitled to her own opinion. <laughs> Seems I busted in at the wrong moment. See you some other time. <laughs> Riley, how could you? Don't be mad at me, Peg. I'll still be foreman one of these days. I don't care about that. You let me stand here and make a fool of myself in front of Honeybee. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Peg. I, I tried, honest, I did. I guess things ain't never gonna break right for me. I'm just a dud and you might as well face it. You should never have married me. Chester Riley, don't you ever say a thing like that again as long as you live. I can't help it, Peg. Sometimes I hate myself just for being me. Dad, don't. Oh, gee, Prom. I didn't want to be foreman just to boss things. I wanted to make you and the kids proud of me instead of always being a bust. Well, if being a wonderful father and a marvelous husband and the thing I love most is being a bust, then you just keep right on being one. I'm saying it just to ease up the bump. Well, that's what I'm here for, dear. To ease your bumps and bruises. Doesn't matter if you're foreman or super or boss of the plant. Just as long as you keep on being Riley. I don't care what you are. Just as long as you're my dad. Me too. I don't even grape about the two bits. Huh. Gee, I don't know what to say except that I guess I got the grandest family in the whole world. Taking Gillis's spot? Yeah, you better get going. You're late. Ah, oh, don't worry. Gillis will cover for me. Oh, I forgot. Has our new dear sweet foreman been around? Good afternoon, Riley. You're late. Five minutes to be exact, then. Huh? Where is he? Up on the catwalk. He's hooked the mic into the PA system. You mean he's watching everybody? Like a cat. Anything he don't like, he starts yelling in the mic. Let's snap it up, Riley. Less conversation and more perspiration is desire. And let up. He's got took with laryngitis in his vocal strings. <laughs> I think the horn broke down, Riley. Good. Now maybe we'll have a little quiet around here. Yeah. I still can't figure out how to super pick Gillis for foreman. 
when there's an ambitious and executive ability. Lean it right on this wing. I got it over the grapevine that the super seen how he cleaned up the joint on his lunchtime. Oh, so that's it, huh? Told him to the super. Bootlicking, huh? I knew there was a fishy ain't. <laughs> I cleaned up the joint. I'm the toad that licked the boot. Oh, that sneak. Oh, that no good Andre. Where is he? Still bumping your gums, eh, Riley? Now get these rivets going. This ain't no restroom. Gillis, you and me are going to have a few words. And mine are that you are a four-flushing chiseler. Them words will get you three black marks in my little book. You can add liar, cheat, and skunk. Which precludes any chance of your getting a gold star this week. Now, come on, get off the dime and fix that public address horn. I ain't no Thomas Edison. I'm ignoring your orders. Suit yourself, Riley. Only I'm going in my office for a nap and a quiet smoke. And when I get back here, I want to see that PA horn in A1 shape. And if I was in your shoes, I'd make it snappy. You got a lot of them fancy cigars he's smoking now. Yeah, I got a lung full of them. Flora Del Toro's perfectos. While I slave like a slave, he's smoking dime cigars. I'm telling you, Muley, if I didn't have a wife and kids to support, I'd quit like that. If you don't fix that PA, you won't have time to quit. Yeah, well, for Peg and the kids, I'll fix it. Come on. Looks like the back of a TV set. Which one do you think she's hooked up to? I don't know. I guess we'll have to try them all. You ready? Let it go. Here's the idiot that turned in the alarm. What made you send out the alarm, mister? Well, you, you see, Chief, it was like this. I thought I smelled smoke. Let's not go through that routine again. It doesn't matter how he did it, as long as he did it. You mean, you mean there was a fire? There could have been a bad one if this man hadn't smelled smoke. <laughs> I smelled smoke? Somebody threw a cigar butt in the rubbish pile up there on the catwalk. That's the kind of carelessness that caused fires. Thanks to this man, we got it out before it got started. You mean, you mean like, well... Good work, Riley. Good work. Oh, there's nothing to any red-blooded... How we smell it all the way down here, I'll never know. To my smeller, distance is no object. I'd like to find the man that started it. Who smokes Flora Del Torres around here? Do you know anyone who smokes this brand? Uh, well, yeah. Gil... I mean... Uh, the, the, the boss, Mr. Cunningham, smokes him. Ridiculous. What would Mr. Cunningham be doing up on the catwalk? Checking up on... cats? <laughs> What's all this I hear about a fire? Where were you, Gillis? I was in on the couch. I mean, I was right on the job, Super. Aha, Riley, smoking on a job. And my brand, too. Oh, you're sniping butts, are you? Ixnay Gillis. So, that's your brand, is it, Gillis? Sure. Especially imported for me from San Diego. Here, try one. There's one for you, too, Chief. Tell me, Gillis, what do you think should be done with a man who endangers the plant and its workers by smoking on the job? Well, um, careful, Gillis. I'm sorry, Ralph. I'd like to protect you, but the plant comes before friendship. You mean you'd fire him on the spot? Well, uh, I see it like this. If it was the first time, I'd give him a stiff warning, 
ball him out and make the dumb cluck work his arm off. Boy, would I make that chump work. I like your decision. Riley, put Gillis to work. Me? I'm appointing the foreman during Hawkins' absence. But I thought I was the foreman, Mr. Cox. You were, until we found your cigar butt up on the catwalk. We're overlooking your fragrant delictus this time, Gillis, but don't let it happen again. You mean I gotta take orders from him? You heard him. Off that time, Gillis. Get the lead out. Action is what we want around here. Plenty of action. A C A action. Next, I'll be supervisor. Then manager. I'll skip assistant manager. Then junior partner. Just be from... satisfied with foreman for a while, dear. Do you think they'll give you a medal for saving the plant? They ought to. He had the whole fire department out. Come in. Hi. Hi, Gillis. Uh, might as well get it over with, Peg. Go on, say it. Say what? Lord it over me like I did to you. Oh, there's nothing to lord over, honey bee. Well, we're all too good of friends to let a thing like this split us up. Have a cigar, Gillis. Oh, no, I quit smoking. After all, it isn't a permanent promotion. Why, well, no, it's just till Hawkins gets back. Maybe six months, maybe a year. Of course, it's Riley, a year and a half, you know. Riley. I've seen his job. Riley. I, mean, I got news for you. Hawkins will be back tomorrow. Well, that's what I said. Hawkins won't be back till... <laughs> tomorrow? They decided not to open a new plant till next year. Queen for a day. 